A Republican-led House committee has subpoenaed Secretary of State Antony Blinken over his role in the disastrous 2021 Afghanistan withdrawal that killed 13 U.S. service members. In a letter to Blinken, House Foreign Affairs Committee Chair Mike McCall writing, quote, Current and former State Department officials have confirmed that you served as the final decision maker for the department on the withdrawal and evacuation. You are therefore in a position to inform the committee's consideration of potential legislation aimed at helping prevent the catastrophic mistakes of the withdrawal. A spokesperson for the State Department criticized the move, calling it yet another unnecessary subpoena. Morgan Ortegas is a former State Department spokesperson under the Trump administration, and she joins us now. Morgan, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. So what do you think about the subpoena? Yeah. So far, the State Department is saying thanks, but no thanks. Anthony Blinken's not showing up on that date. So what happens next? Uh, well, he absolutely should have to testify before this. I know that they will argue that he's been under oath and discussed Afghanistan many times, but we know that there's still so much that hasn't been answered for. And the one thing that we have to remember is that we have seen chaos and war and almost every theater in the globe. And one of the reasons I think principally that happened is because of the chaotic and disastrous draw with, from Afghanistan. Whenever the world saw that the United States was weak, we had dictators and despots that knew that they could take advantage of us. Uh, so I think the subpoena is incredibly Im important. Uh, Antony Blinken, everybody, by the way, uh, the Secretary of Defense, uh, Lloyd Austin, uh, the National Security Advisor, everybody and Biden's national security team should have to answer for what happened that day. It's not just about that disaster and chaotic withdrawal. It's the fact that 13 Americans were killed in that ISIS-K attack. And we also know, we were told uh, that we would still have over the horizon uh, strikes that the administration would be able to pursue. Well, we know that ISIS, ISIS-K, has a foothold now in every single province in Afghanistan. We know that women are no longer allowed to go to school, that they have to cover themselves. Uh, we know that we have billions of dollars that equip of equipment that were left there. And because Biden and Harris, and remember that the vice president bragged about being the last one in the room with President Biden making those decisions, because they never held anybody accountable in their national security team, you've seen the same national security team fumble their way through so many wars and crises since then. So mm -hmm. I think it's long overdue for somebody in this administration to be held accountable. If they're not going to be held accountable by Biden and Harris, they should at least be under oath and held accountable to the American people right. for what happened. Morgan, from its reticence in answering questions like you just mentioned, to the way it handled over just the last week, how it handled Gold Star families trying to grieve their loved ones, many of times their own children, at Arlington National Cemetery. Isn't it clear that this administration yeah. just wants this disastrous withdrawal to go away? One, to sort of, I guess, help Joe Biden's legacy, but also not to quote unquote sully Kamala Harris as she tries to win the presidency. Yeah, it really backfired against her, obviously, whenever she uh, tried to use this, you know, faux controversy with Trump, former President Trump, being at Arlington Cemetery with those aggrieved families. That, I think that really backfired on her because, you know, she has been unable to get in front of TV cameras. Neither has Biden to say their names. I know that the families all say that they haven't heard from her uh, as well. And we know, of course, very famously that President Biden even forgot that American service members died uh, on his watch while he was president. Um, you know, there's a lot of times that former President Bush has often talked about this, that there's times whenever family members lash out uh, at you. And uh, he always said, and Dana Perino has talked about this as well. Former President Bush basically, I'm paraphrasing, always said that, you know what, these families lost their child in service to the country. So if they want to be angry at me as the president, I, I'm going to take it, right? Because I'm the one who gave the order, who put their children in harm's way. We've seen President Biden and Kamala Harris unable to take the same responsibility for sending these young men and women to their death. And it's just really shameful. Yeah, that's great historical context as to what a George W. Bush's stance was. And I'm sure many presidents to come as well. Morgan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's great talking to you as Thanks, always. Morgan. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.